CILT Sri Lanka is proud to celebrate World Maritime Day, a day dedicated by the International Maritime Organization to recognize the crucial role that the shipping and maritime industry plays in connecting the world through global trade. This year's theme, Seafarers at the Core of Shipping's Future, recognizes the efforts and the invaluable service performed by the men and women who serve the maritime industry and subsequently contribute to the global economy. We are indeed privileged to have with us Captain Nihal Kapadipula, Chairman of the Sri Lanka Ports Authority, sharing his candid views in an interview with Mr. Chandima Hulangamua, Chairman of the Maritime Subcommittee of CILT Sri Lanka. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Captain Nihal Kapadipula, Chairman of SLPA. We warmly welcome you and to a discussion with the CIIT, Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport. And thank you very much for accepting our invitation for our discussion. It's, it's my pleasure, actually. I mean, me being a member of CILT and knowing that CILT is a think tank and also sharing knowledge and giving, um, empowering the transport and logistics sector with all your uh, activities and uh, knowledge sharing, uh, SLPA certainly want to be part of uh, CILT. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Captain. And uh, uh, I would like to start with asking you how the current situation of Port of Colombo, uh, especially during this uh, pandemic, is it uh, operating up to this uh, expected standards or do you have any uh, issues at the moment? All right. The uh, COVID-19 pandemic is a worldwide situation where actually not only Colombo, but uh, the, all the the whole supply chain has been affected by that. But how we coped was, the, I'll give you in figures. If you take the, up to August, um, we are risen by 3.8%. And if you take the domestic, we have gone over 15%. That's, significant. That's uh, That shows the in figures. Of course, the number of vessels have slowed down, reduced. That's uh, due to the, you know, the freight problem and the empty container positioning and the slow, what do you say, the vessel, uh, what do you call, availability, the low vessel availability, all that is there. But the volumes have come. Our domestic market has risen. And um, how we go to the pandemic to handle that situation was uh, uh, it, it, from the beginning. Uh, and even now, what you're doing is the we have got, we have been proactive in this situation. We have got even retired uh, employees on standby. We got retired. And we have even identified, I, we have sent people to their homes who have come on holiday and who have lost their jobs abroad, who are very skilled uh, gantry operators, transit train operators, drivers. We got a bank of them. So, so even if our employees fall ill, we have sufficient to fill up. So you are very much on control. Very control. much on control. Not only us, actually the CICT, SAGT, they are all working together at this moment. And, and uh, everybody is doing a fine job. And uh, can, you, can you give us the uh, uh, outlook for 2021 and uh, how the, the things are expected to change or improve during the year? Outlook for 2021, as you know, if you look at the current situation in the countries, the, the uh, what do you call the financial crisis and also the lack of foreign exchange in, in available here, I'm sure there are going to be some uh, drop in imports because there will be government really putting some regulations on maybe some controls on our domestic market, that's for sure. Apart from that, our terminals are going ahead. The East Continental Terminal, which is going to uh, be tendered out by end of this year, which is 1,350 meters in length. It's the, another, that means adding to the 400, another about 900, which will bring another 3 million TUs to the port. And uh, West Canada Terminal will be uh, getting off the ground by 23. So that's another 3 million. So now immediately it won't be 3 million, but by face by face we'll be starting. And we want to be uh, ahead, the capacity we want to build ahead of the demand. So that's ensure that we'll stay in track. That's fantastic. That's really good news for all mm -hmm. shipping lines calling Kalama. And uh, 
We know that the Port of Kalamba has been uh, operating continuously during the pandemic. And uh, can you explain what are the proactive actions that you have taken to avoid the conditions? Actually, there's no condition at this moment. The condition was in the beginning due to lack of manpower. As I said before, uh, we managed to uh, eliminate that factor by engaging private labor or maybe on contract basis, on uh, standby. Uh, personnel so that as and when we require them, they will be, we have the people. So there was no, initially I remember there was a stagnant situation and sometimes some of the uh, ships uh, waiting out there for birthing because of lack of uh, people to work here. But now that has been taken off completely and we are on, we are top of the uh, situation. We have even gone ahead and uh, build a uh, intermediate COVID treatment center so that even in the country if there's no beds available in hospitals for our our patients here in the port, we look after them, we take care of them, we feed them, give, give them clothing. And we have specialized doctor on locum status. We have employed them, the nurses, the orderlies. And we have a special area with about 110 beds for our employees alone. So the mental situation or maybe the strength is built within the employees in that the employer is in, in, taking care of the employee. We That's not fantastic. let them down. So. Meanwhile, the morale is high. Yeah. So we, uh, all, all our team, all the unions, with their support, uh, it's a fantastic effort. And we will uh, uh, be, we, we, are, we are in power with any port in the world. SLP may be the first to have that kind of uh, uh, facility sure. for all government institutions. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we, Captain, we, we regularly hear uh, that several major ports in the world, in the Europe, US, China, getting congested due to the pandemic. And uh, can you give us an update on the current uh, situation of these uh, hub ports? Yes, there was this, uh, about a week back, I was re listening to some news items saying that in the LA, Los Angeles in the Long Beach, there was over 100 ships anchored and waiting. And suddenly you find in um, the Chinese area, the export, the vessels which are outbound, they are stagnated out there near one of the Chinese ports. And then a month back, it was about Yantiang. It's closed down due to the COVID. So that is a situation, of course, entirely due to COVID. And that cascaded into a situation where they import, there, is no Im there is no importers, exporters are, don't know what to do with. The shipping lines go M half empty. So the freight trade skyrocketed. And once the ship gets in there, they can't come out because there is uh, nothing to fill that with. So that is a big problem. So everything was moving slowly. But I think slowly we should be overcoming this situation because now the supply chain is uh, talking to each other. Uh, the Far East area is now looking at uh, shifting their bases towards the uh, other area as well that is the um, Southeast Asia. They're trying to deploy, uh, turn around the vessels faster. Uh, I have a very strong feeling that the freight market will drop after this situation. It's not going to be high. Yeah. And this is a peak, I think. Uh, Captain, uh, how do you see the long-term plan for Sri Lanka maritime landscape in next 10 years, like the ECT in full operation and uh, West Continental Terminal and the JCT expansion? And also, if you can uh, touch on the other regional ports like uh, Hambantota, Gaul, Trikumali, KKs, mm. like where's that will be great. So, the port development. Let's take Colombo first. Port of Colombo, as I said, by 2025, east and west, both should be operational. So, that's going to be giving us additional uh, capacity. This area, this uh, Indian subcontinent, the population will be growing at the fastest rate. Of course, pandemic, pandemic situation has slowed it down, but it's even beating China. The humanity is here. So the production is here, the demand is here. So just imagine the movement of containers. The, in the intra-Asia trade, we are always talking about Far East Europe. Now it's going to be intra-Asia. So we will not be able sometimes to cope up with the transshipment 
here and also even if we join hands with India, to, I was I was using this terminology called synergize. Even if we synergize, we will have to still build more capacity to, to cater for this demand. East Continental Terminal, West Continental Terminal, then the extension of the West Continental Terminal. That's another BOT for an, another later date. That will add another 3 million. Then we have the North Port project. The North Port project is a ADB funded, the feasibility is on now. It will add another 10 million TUs by 2040. 2040. Yes. It gives a lot of logistic uh, facility areas. So basically, 3, 3, 6, 9, plus the 5 here, 14, plus the 10 there, 24. And you keep on, I mean, it's already fine. Even if you can, Hamantra may open its gates if the if there's surplus here. So that can be done. So we, we are always a, getting towards being a maritime hub is not a difficult thing for us, provided that we build capacity in time and in advance. And we are now the logistic area, we are improving. We are, you know, the old UCT, Unity Container Terminal. We are, we are stopped container operations there. We are shifting those gantry cranes to JCT and scrapping the JCT one old gantry cranes, which are 13 across there. Uh, and um, opening a big warehouse for multi-country consolidation, uh, LCL operation, e L LCL consolidation, or uh, LCL imports and LCL consolidation. We are trying to free the BQ of that so that the Bandarnaiki, we are trying to convert that to a passenger location. So all the passenger ships will be birthed there at the Bandarnaiki in the future. And apart from that, there's another logistic a uh, hub that is to be created in the south port uh, that is between ECT and the CICT. Uh, so we very, very, very much ports. regional ports like for Hambantota. Hambantota is actually, though they are given on 99-year-old lease to uh, the China merchant, uh, they are doing very well at this moment. They are doing their, uh, what you call the transshipment of uh, vehicles very well. And they are doing bunkering. Uh, and I think they are not trying to, they are about to procure their 26 across long reach uh, gantry cranes. So they are, I think, getting themselves geared now to start their continuous operations as well. So, so will that be in uh, no. uh, are you mean, uh, uh, competition? Uh, competition? Kalamba, competition is such, I mean, uh, okay, how, how will they do competing? I mean, uh, a ship has to come there, either you turn around or maybe the transshipment. So, which all depends on... No, I don't think the uh, China... I was speaking to the CEO there. We are. Uh, we might probably work together in the future. So, you are looking for more synergies? More well, synergies, that's right. Otherwise, we can't. We can't cope up. If you look at Gaul, Gaul master plan now, and we are putting a cabinet memorandum just last week, and we got the decision now to use it as a, a mixed development project. Mixed development. So, basically, we are looking at leisure, with the Devata, that area, that place, all the beaches, plus added, added breakwaters to ensure that the passenger activity is done. Earlier, we were only talking about yachts. Now, it's only passengers. Okay. So, uh, and there's a mixed development, maybe hotels for tourism and utilize that. So, that's goal. It's all on the map. It's the board cabinet decision came only just two days ago, I think. And Trinkamali, we are zoning it out for different, different industries. While doing the navigation, the Prima operation will be there on the uh, Tokyo Cement operation will be there and the other uh, activities will be there, imports, export. Plus, we are looking at getting the backyard, in zone it out and give it to different industries. So obviously, when that develops, the ships will come and go, export, import. So, that is the plan for Sri Lanka at this moment. And I'm sure with the activities here, uh, we will certainly be called the maritime hub of the Southeast Asia. Thank you, Captain. And just uh, one uh, by question of the uh, uh, earlier question on the ECT and the uh, West Continental Terminal. Uh, the equipment for East Continental Terminal already uh, procured or is it? Not there? yet, not yet. Okay. West Canton Terminal is, uh, is on a BOT, so we are the minor shareholder, 15%. Uh, 
and uh, the rest is by the Tadani and John Keys. So they be doing the procurement. On the East Canal Terminal, we have now, uh, oh, actually the tender is evaluate, being evaluated now, the financial proposal has to be open. It's a two on loop. Okay. And the civil construction of the ECT is also uh, in the final stages. So that's why by within the month, when next month or two, it will be all confirmed. So where, where, when do you expect the ECT? Before the end of the year. No, we are going almost in October now. No, I mean, the fully, uh, fully operational is... Good. Not fully operational. We'll let go by part by part, you know. Yeah. So, fully operational by 2025. Now, uh, when you talk about the productivity of SLPA control terminals, how do you, and the, uh, how do you uh, rank yourself, not rank actually, how, how do you uh, uh, compare yourself for your SLPA uh, operated terminals as well as the private terminals with the... Uh, hub terminals in uh, Singapore, Jablali, and uh, maybe Rotterdam, and uh, Chinese ports uh, mm. like Hong Kong and Shanghai. So how do you how do you uh, compare when compare with those uh, terminals? Where is the SAP uh, control right. terminals? Uh, in an average, let's see, uh, JCT is doing about on the main lines about uh, 22 gantry moves per hour. And the East Canton doing about 29. And uh, SAGT is doing only 26 or so. But uh, CICD is doing about 30 now. But mind you, those are all twin lift cranes, the new ones. Okay. And JCT has only two twin lift cranes. And, and they're all, all deep draft vessels. And so, in the new terminal, we are all trying to get the 26 across and twin lift. Which will be so it will be having the birth productivity on a the gross skin productivity very high and uh, quick whistle turn around. Uh, moreover, we are now gone from Navis to N4. So our productivity levels are we are keeping in line, but not as much as the some of these like Puerto Busan and you know, you can say some they go on to 50, 40, 50 per hour. We will reach there one day in the new port, new south port. Colombo JCT, we still have the 16 across, 18 across, and uh, single trolley. So uh, we can't improve that, but we can't throw them also because they are not so old. Nobody expected uh, the things to move fast, so fast. The new buildings are massive, and the new equipment is the what we call the inventory is so large. So, we put the Columbus South Port and the North Port, we get ourselves geared to that. And apart from that, we are gone e commerce now. We have uh, the e manifest is there for the clearance and e DU. Yeah. So, people can pay through the electronic system from home yeah. and receive and come in. We don't, and there's no, there's no paper, paperless. Uh, so, it's, it's, it's uh, getting better. better. I think that, that that was one of the uh, positives of COVID-19, <laughs> so which is finally coming. Yeah. And uh, what are the major challenges that uh, SLPA and the Port of Colombo? I mean, the Port of Colombo is facing particularly uh, considering the ITT, inter-terminal trucking, and uh, what are the uh, uh, major challenges that you face currently? I know that uh, there have been uh, with the with the uh, construction of the port city and the bridges coming up mm. some issues and then uh, uh, I know that you have uh, intervened and uh, given a solution mm. recently for ITD tracking yeah. so and uh, likewise if you can elaborate yeah, those are those are, are so those are temporary things actually yeah. ITD but uh, the ITD it all depends on the haulier and his efficiency uh, that is one aspect so which is okay the current haulier is quite okay but as you said that the elevated highway which is going across the port to the port city and in the middle of the main road, our six lane road, they are digging to set up piles, you know, because of that the traffic get blocked, the imports get blocked, the exports get blocked and also on top of that the ITT has to run. So what I did was recently just, just, just one week back now, I broke open the wall of the, one of the terminals and made a temporary thing on porta cabins and made a ITT in. So, see this. And got the power lines. Immediate solution. Immediate solution. That, that has taken the, the, what you call the congestion, dropped it by 50% immediately. 
So that is done. And uh, apart from that, ITT, we are not having. Uh, you are right. Uh, some time ago, we had the ITT problem. That is mainly because of the manpower and for people falling ill and it was spreading. Now, I think people have now got all the vaccinations and I am now giving Kasa and Slava, Slavo, Customs, all the port users. I'm sending a circle. I was just writing that, saying that um, from November 1st, this is coming out, that uh, we will only permit people who have carry the vaccination card. Oh. This is in the best interest of uh, all the port users, you know. So, so they'll have to get the vaccination and come if you want to. So it will be mandatory to mandatory, mandatory, so that it will be, you know, the safety of the personnel and to ensure that uninterrupted uh, uh, operation will be carried out in the port. Okay, thank you. And um, we have observed that the birthing and sailing delay, sailing of uh, Port of Kalamba has improved during the last uh, few years. And uh, but when you compare with the uh, global major hubs, still mm. there are some areas to improve on the birthing and sailing. So, uh, can you uh, give us some uh, uh, ideas? How, how, what are the plans that you have to improve birthing and sailing of uh, Port of Colombo? Well, we have a professional lot of pilots, uh, a very uh, experienced, a, a very experienced harbour master was my. In and fact, my, my cadet at that time, now he's our master. I know their capabilities, they're very good. Uh, the tugs we have, sufficient tugs for the moment. But I think when other two terminals are out, we need to get more tugs, that's for sure. Sometimes this could be a seasonal situation where during the monsoon time, uh, the sailing berthing gets hampered with that. Uh, but yes, there is one area which I think we should improve on. Calling for pilot time, pilot onboard time, completion time. This coordination is still, I feel, there's a bit of a uh, lapse. So that has to be eliminated. So that means pilot uh, or he, the, the sailing crew or maybe the, should not come uh, once the last container and the lashing is done. But I, I would say that they should be a little early and be ready when the ship is ready. That's my... Uh, that will eliminate that yeah, vessel at birth. That's fantastic. So, if the, if the people are... Uh, the morning crew is ready mm. and uh, when the ship is uh, ready to... Uh, when they complete the ship, so within 15 minutes you can sail. Mm. So, if that... So that ship is away because they, rather than after finishing, you wait for... Uh, but only thing is... This, early also we uh, experience the situation where two or three ships call at the same time. Apart from that, I think we can avoid this. I mean, we are in par with, and we have the VTS system now, vessel traffic monitoring, all that is there. Uh, so Captain, uh, are there any immediate plans to upgrade the equipment of JCT web to that our own equipment are there and uh, to reduce the interruptions? Because we experience sometimes uh, breakdown of trains, and uh, uh, obviously these are very. Yeah, we we, yeah, we we need to get some more uh, prime overs. Uh, there's a uh, problem with the prime over and uh, and also the uh, the container location uh, equipment I want to put on the uh, vehicles so that location data those things and uh, at this moment there is we are okay but uh, I'm sure with time to come things have to be replaced uh, time and again and also, um, you are planning to get the UCT cranes. UCT cranes with JCT. Yeah. Otherwise, so, it's all okay. Yes. Governor, during the recent past, uh, we have heard uh, several maritime disasters from many ports in the world. And it's a, just a question to you that uh, is the port of Colombo fully geared to handle any maritime disaster? Or if not, what action are you to take to uh, facilitate any disaster? Maritime you're disaster. talking about maritime disaster. Uh, you're talking to me as a chairman of the port. So I'll be, my jurisdiction actually stops within the, uh, what you call the port limits. So for that, I have sufficient. I can manage with my oil booms, my fire, 
uh, in, uh, what you call the engines and we were the big, uh, very, uh, very equipped fire brigade with uh, even the tugboats which can go out and spray water. But when you talk about the rest of the island and this thing, that all the, the coastline belongs to direct to machine shipping. So those are things actually had to be deal, dealt separately through the insurance companies and things like that, you know. Now we can see some uh, uh, vessel called Express Pearl is gone aground there and it created quite a calamity. Anyway. So ma mainly, Captain, uh, to avoid the, such uh, disasters, are we really equipped? Uh, so it's, it's not only the port's duty. Yeah. It's the Marine Environment Protection Authority. Then it is the Coast Guard. Uh, so that it should be a kind of a uh, what do you call operation center. Whoever will who be there will be a coordinating center in somewhere uh, where it should be headed by somebody, which is being uh, there is a procedure there. Do you think that there is a necessity to have such a disaster management center sort of thing to ha handle such maritime? I think that's a good one, but, uh, but port port can be a part of it. Yeah. But port should not head that. Right. We are talking about the whole island. Yeah. Yeah. So that that is an important thing. And uh, uh, Captain, you touched on the logistic facilities also. Uh, what what the uh, port of Colombo is planning to? Can you explain the plans for uh, expanding the logistic facilities like uh, MCC operations, hmm. special operations? As I, as, yeah. As I said in the past, a little while ago that we are planning to remove the LCL, the LCL operation and everything from BQ, Bandar Naikaki, towards the UCT. And we are going to build a specialized uh, warehouse there for LCL and MCC operations. So that will be barcoded, uh, digitized, all that is that. And then there's a blue mandal that area, uh, an a, quite a plot being earmarked. So that is going to be on a private-public partnership. Again, like the LCL operation, which is being uh, multi country consolidation, or sometimes which is done in outside the in different warehouses, that kind of a system. And apart from that, uh, then, the, as I said, in the South Port, the, the China Merchant Group has planned to invest and start something. And uh, so that's a value addition there. At this moment, uh, I think the support for logistics is getting better and better. If you look at the old Bandarna key, it just stuff has been, uh, you know, strewn and thrown and I mean, dif difficult to sometimes identify. That has to be, uh, because when you're going to be a developed maritime hub, we have to get away from that system. We have to be organized, apart from the inventory uh, and also the labeling and also different stacking. Uh, and it should be easy for the people who come to clear. Captain, now we experience shipping lines as well as the terminals and the government agencies uh, going on to digitization such as EDUs. What initiatives taken by Port of Colombo, particularly uh, SLPA, uh, dealing with COVID-19 pandemic uh, and beyond in terms of digitization and digitalization? And uh, are we to experience smart gates of clearance and uh, paperless transactions hmm. in the future? So, can you elaborate? Yeah, we are heading there because, the, as I said, uh, now the e-banking, e-transactions, yeah. only thing that they have to do is bring the custodic. That also e-manifest now. Yeah. So, um, once you do that, I mean, when less people come into the port and uh, less paperwork or maybe no paperwork, paperless, paperless transaction takes place, there is that. So, smart gates, you said, that has to be done in onesie. There's all these, uh, these structural, uh, what you call, uh, activities connecting the port city is completed because this is a complete, uh, certain area has been disoriented. I mean, we are relocating many, many where work, uh, workshops, where warehouses. You know, once that is done, we have to look at it. Because otherwise, the security wise in the port, the gates are really good. You know, the cameras are being fitted now. And uh, so, uh, we are keeping in line with, actually, we have a team who is studying uh, what's happening in the world. So, we are, we are ensuring that we also will follow the same things that is happening in developed uh, harbors. So, that 
it will be made easy for the uh, the logistic. What, what is the status of the uh, uh, port community system to create uh, an eco uh, ecosystem which can easily facilitate mm. communication, <coughs> and, uh, transact and uh, settle payments by various stakeholders. So this mm. is in line with the uh, sure, sure. earlier question also. So uh, At this moment, uh, there is a feasibility study which is done through an ADB funding. And um, it is it's not a you know, there are all these things are available sometimes on the shelf. Hmm. Uh, this is very complex. It's not easy. Yeah. We don't want to get a thing that is available anywhere else because our data might be taken away. We might lose our business also. Yeah. So we must. We are trying to look at a entity which will tailor made it, uh, make it for us mm -hmm. to suit us. So. We are heading there now. We have finished this uh, consultancies. We have done that, and we are uh, looking at how fast we can get it going. We we'll are at it. Okay. And uh, SLP being the landlord and uh, well as a regulator can play a key role in making Sri Lanka maritime and logistics hub attracting much needed foreign talent to the country. Cope with all the agencies, and how do you? What I would say is the, we are we are done very well so far. Um, we are working with all the stakeholders. Uh, currently having constant meetings and dialogue with them. And um, as a regulator, uh, it is the uh, it, it's a, the regulator or the SLPA. We should ensure that we will we should lead the way and guide the rest of the stakeholders, which is happening at this moment. We are going towards uh, along the correct path at this moment. We are not finding it that difficult because we have a very good uh, minister in charge, the minister's support, and I have a good team in the SLPA. And also, we have a good relationship with the rest of the stakeholders here and with the other ministries too. So, uh, also, uh, I'm very working very closely with the private sector terminals the SAGT and the CICT and um, on a daily basis we are comparing notes as to how and we are not isolated ourselves from the rest of the area. We don't find any difficulty but the only thing is uh, we need to get ourselves in par with the other ports in the neighborhood or maybe the developed ports. So that that's uh, in our agenda anyway and we have a what you call a marketing team. They are studying and they are looking at, I have even uh, got uh, the, what you call the subscription for different magazines, e-magazines now, and they're studying what's happening in the world. And also we are looking at all the other equipment and uh, we are not behind closed doors. We are, we are open to development and, um, and that's right. Uh, thank you, Captain. Uh, as you said, uh, now, the Port of Colombo is on a development plan, the capacity development uh, is on the cards, and uh, it's happening now. Now, at the same time, we hear that our neighboring country, like uh, India, there are a lot of uh, uh, ports coming up, mm. regional ports coming up. And uh, how do you, uh, do you, do you think that those uh, will be threat to our Port of Colombo? When, uh Prime Minister Narendra Modi came out with this Sagarmala project in 2015 to see that with the railroad network, ICDs, lifting the cabotage and developing the major ports, other ports, logistic hubs, interconnectivity from east to west, north to south, 140 billion US dollar investment. Yeah, that was his investment. And on top of that, in 2016, uh, a minister called Balu, Union Minister of India, he got on the podium and said, we are losing about 300 million US dollars per annum on our transshipment, Sri Lanka. We must get it back. That is where the, the fright was put to our Sri Lankans. So you're wondering what the hell is going to happen now. Then we looked at the drawing board, saw the 
size of the ships being built, the capacities, and you look at the schedules of those ships which are going to come out from the drawing board, and uh, normally the building schedule. And when you look at those boats, we realize that uh, with these volumes, at that time there was no pandemonium, uh, pandemic situation. It was very clear at that time I'm talking about. And the production was increasing from the east, west, then the, then the production shift, the, the, the engine shifted to the, what do you call, uh, Southeast Asia, Vietnam, Cambodia, these countries, Indonesia, and the goods went up and down. Then it was complemented by the OBOR, One Belt, One Road, of uh, 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 the uh, President uh, Xi Jinping. So that was $300 tri trillion dollars investment. And that was coming, one is the Silk Road, the Sea Route, the other one through China to Europe. And then there was this uh, cross things, uh, the Pakistan, uh, uh, China corridor. And the other one was the Myanmar, Bangladesh corridor. All those put together. We were, and also there was some, so, spoke about even the, what do you call the Krak Canal through Thailand. Every road, every avenue headed towards Sri Lanka. I was thinking, I was at home at that time, however much India build ports, we are not going to lose. And with that type of commodity being transshipped and uh, transported by sea, even as I said, even Sri Lanka and India, if we synergize, still we might not be able to cope up. So there is never going to be a threat. Okay. And thank you very much for our business discussion. But uh, before we leave, I would like to ask uh, how the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport, CILT, uh, the profit, as a professional body, can play a key role in assisting SLPA and the various terminals and as a partner on the knowledge, uh, uh, as a knowledge partner to SLPA and uh, uh, its terminals. Uh, we acknowledge the fact that uh, CLT assists and maybe impart their knowledge to the transport and logistics sector. You have CILT in the country has brought uh, onto the platform all the logistic personnel. That's an excellent thing, which I would always compliment CILT for that. SLPA or the Port Authority being the one of the key stakeholders on the, the supply chain in Sri Lanka. We'll be always be glad to be a part of you. And also at this moment, I know there are some of our uh, officers are uh, lecturing at different forums and they are providing, uh, imparting their knowledge there. At the same time, also we could jointly have, we have a Mahapala training center. We can start some exercise there, if required. And we'll be very glad and very thankful uh, to be a part of uh, CILT. And we'll be obliged to help you all in any endeavor in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for your kind words, uh, Captain. And uh, thank you very much for accepting our invitation and joining for our interview. And this, is, this will be very useful and uh, I think uh, uh, so all our viewers and uh, even CIT has our student base as well as our professional base and also this will be uh, public uh, on this particular uh, full maritime day. So thank you very much Captain and for your time. My for pleasure, work. my pleasure Chandima and, and uh, great that uh, great chat. <laughs>